Okay, thank you for uh, your patience, and we understand now we are indeed joined by jockey Julian Leperu, who will have the mount uh, a week from Saturday ab aboard Union Rags. Julian, it's Eric Wing in New York. Thanks for coming on with us today. Oh, thank you for having me. Uh, Julian, uh, obviously there's been lots and lots of discussion about the uh, the trip Union Rags had in the Florida Derby. Uh, mm -hmm. Now that you've had uh, two, three weeks to to digest it all, what was your view of how the race actually unfolded? Well, you know, I think um, I think the main thing now after you know after a couple of weeks uh, after the race, I think is uh, that he actually came back, you know, sound and uh, and uh, he had an easy race. So I'm just happy about it and uh, try to forget about the Florida Derby and try to focus on, on the race Saturday, next Saturday. Now, uh, we mentioned earlier, Julian, that uh, you've ridden him uh, for both of his 2012 starts. In those mm -hmm. two races aboard Union Rags, is there anything you've learned about him that you didn't know uh, before you had the mount? Well, it's just, you know, the... The first race, Fontaine of you know, it was very impressive. And uh, I think that's, uh, that's the race uh, people should look up to. And uh, and I think uh, uh, hopefully we'll get a good trip in Kentucky and um, and he can show his talent, you know, and uh, that would be great. And are you going to feel, uh, I mean, there's always pressure associated with, with uh, riding a horse in the Kentucky Derby, but mm -hmm. um, is, is there a lot more pressure with a horse that has as high a profile as Union Rags? Well, you know, yeah, like you said, there's always, you know, uh, pressure for the Kentucky Derby, but, um, you know, uh, it's, it's obviously, uh, you know, great to have a shot in before the race, you know, but it's definitely more pressure when you do. Um, you know, I think this year is a very competitive uh, group of three years old and uh, a lot of very good three years old. So hopefully we get a good clean trip and uh, and see who's the best one. Okay, Julian, I might ask you a question later, but uh, I want to give the media listening in their opportunity to do so. So at this point, I'll turn things back over to Michelle, and she'll check in with the media to see if they have any questions for you. Okay. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, if you do have a question, please press star 1 at this time. The first question comes from Bill Finley of New York Times. Please go ahead. Hi, Julian. Um, shortly after the Derby, you'll be coming to New York uh, as a regular mm -hmm. rider for the first time you were an apprentice. Could you tell us why you've decided to leave Kentucky and come to New York and uh, riding against what's going to be a very difficult riding colony? How do you think you're going to do? Well, you know, I think it's uh, actually more than one reason. Um, you know, I think just uh, for my career, I think it's a uh, step forward and, uh, you know, um, uh, I just I'm just very excited about trying to to get something done in New York. Like you say, I, I stopped there as an apprentice, and um, you know I think it's the right step for me to to come back there now. Julian, I'd also like to ask you. Um, you know, you, you just told Eric that you know, you're looking, you're not looking back at the Florida Derby, but shortly after the race, you sent out a tweet where it was clear that you weren't happy with some of the criticism. And uh, considering that that you were criticized for the ride, do you feel like you have anything to prove in the Kentucky Derby? Do you want to get revenge, so to speak, on the people that say you didn't ride the best race in Florida? Well, all I want for the Kentucky Derby is uh, to have you and ride in. Uh, in a, in a position to win and, and see if we, if we can win, you know that's a, that's the only thing I, I really want. And um, I hope I hope we do win and uh, see what happens. You know, it's a it's a great horse. He's very nice and and uh, he definitely got a got a great chance. Very good. Thank you, Julian. Thank you. Thank you. The next question comes from Frank. Ants of Thoroughbred, please go ahead. Hey, Julian, how are you? Good, how are you? Pretty good. Hey, um, really the only two losses on Union Rag's record that came against front-running horses that kept going on the horses that kept going on the front end. On paper, the Derby looks like it's going to have a lot of speed in there. Is that your feeling as well? And do you do you think that puts uh, your horse in a better position? <laughs> um, yes, I do. 
Um, definitely, I think, you know, with horses like uh, Anson and Bollemeister mm-hmm. um, and others, you know, take charge in the and stuff. Yeah. Uh, it's gonna be a it's gonna be a lot of speed, um, but you know, like usual, yeah, Derby for the rest of the Derby you get speed anyway. But yeah, um, and uh, yeah, definitely for him, I think it'd be great. My quarter, if we got a good speed in front, uh, I think it's gonna just go, you know, let's go for for us, you know. Do you have any post position post positions you're pulling for at this point? No, I didn't really think about it, and mm-hmm. uh, didn't really talk about it with my my table. But you know, we, you know, the perfect one would be uh, in the middle of it a little bit, you know. Yeah. Thank not you, too Wayne. inside, not too outside. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> Thank you. The next question comes from Carol Holden of Trackside. Please go ahead. Hi, Julian. Thanks a lot for joining us. Um, I love watching your riding style, but one of the most distinctive things is your hands. You ride more like a show rider of that with your hands. I was wondering what your background might be in riding. Uh, well, actually, I did show, show jumping when I was uh, younger. So. Uh, I started when I was 11, and uh, and did some competition um, like until 18, and then I started riding uh, um, race horses. What comparison can you make um, when you I watch your hands as opposed to most riders? You tend mm-hmm. to sort of give with them as opposed to a lot of riders just taking a hold of a horse. Yeah, I just you know I guess I just try to don't fight too much with my horses. Um, and, um, yeah, be gentle and a mouth, you know, that's, that's how I learned how to ride, you know, so I guess, yes, it's from, uh, that's from the show jump also. All right, thank you, and best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. The next question comes from Debbie Arrington of Sacramento Bee. Please go ahead. Hi, Julian. Thank you so much for coming on today. Um, you were also the regular rider on Daddy Knows Best and won two mm-hmm. derbies with him uh, this season on the walk-up. Um, uh, what do you think about his chances uh, in the derby? Well, you know, like uh, I, always, I always say with Daddy Knows Best, more distance, more distance better it's going to be. So, you know, it's going to be, I think it's going to rain good in this race. Um, I guess he's been working very good, as everybody seen on the racing form. But, uh, you know, more distance better is going to be. So, yeah, it's definitely us we got to look forward to. And um, do you think with, with these horses uh, in this field so closely rated together, do you think that it could become a jockey's race and that you might have an edge being a regular at Churchill? Well, I think, uh, yeah, I think, you know, it's a lot of – good three years old this year and uh it's gonna be uh as a trip and uh and uh you know i rode a lot of uh years in church here so i, I may have uh, an advantage but you know every other jockey is a great jockey so it doesn't really matter i think at this point very good best of luck thank you thank you the next question comes from Mike Pina of Horse Racing Radio Network. Please go ahead. Mm-hmm. Hey, Julian, how you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good, good. Hey, listen, the big question mark for all of these three-year-olds at this point in the season is how will they handle the mile and a quarter at Churchill Downs? And, mm-hmm. and what has – you would know better than anybody with Union Rags. What has he shown you that makes you believe that he'll get that mile and a quarter and he'll be the same at a mile and a quarter as he is at the shorter distances? Well, you know, I think it's, I think it will. Uh, obviously, you never know before you actually try it. But, um, but you know, last time my eight in the Florida Derby, even if uh, you run only late, you just you don't get tired and get up out very strong. So, you know, I think I believe you will do it uh, fine, yes. What are some of the things that you look for when you're aboard him that, that tell you that he can – 
he's going to finish the same way he finishes going a mile and a quarter? Well, I think it's mostly the gallop out. You know, if uh, if you go a mile, mile and quarter, mile sixteen. I mean, mile, mile, mile sixteen or mile and eight, and after the wire, you just uh, you all just stop and uh, doesn't go anywhere. I think the distance might be a problem, but um, if he gallops out good and and uh, with it no problem, I think it'll be fine. Yeah. One last question. One last follow up to this is. It looked like during the Florida Derby that he displayed a few different gears, and I've heard a lot of riders talk about a horse needing to make a few different runs in the Derby to be successful. Mm-hmm. Does he have those multiple gears? Well, in Derby, you definitely have to have those because uh, mostly because you got 20 horses and uh, there's a lot of traffic, so you definitely have those gears to to go through traffic. Um, yeah, I think he, he sure has got a he's got gears and. And uh, when I got him out, you know, in the Florida Derby, he actually kicked on very nice for me. So, yeah, I think it'd be good. All right. Thanks, Julian. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, if you do have a question, please press star one at this time. The next question comes from David Grinning of Daily Racing Forum. Please go ahead. Uh, Julian, along the same lines of the question I was asked earlier, I was wondering, when you look at what's going to re- be here for the Belmont meet, um, A, do you view this as the toughest colony you've ridden in, and B, how confident are you that you have enough business um, to be comp- to be a competitor if you want to be? Well, it's definitely the, the toughest uh, meet that anybody's going to be in anyway. Um, I think, I think uh, you know, business-wise, I mean, we we got to work on it. Uh, but uh, you know, I, I've been walk, uh, working for trainers in in uh, Florida, the, the, the in New York too. So um, I believe I can pick up some business there. Yeah. And how how different is Belmont? I mean, obviously it's a, it's a mile and a half track, but do you, do you feel that that plays uh, uh, into your strength, or is it is it a challenge uh, this this turf this course here? No, I mean, you know, I've been riding in Belmont every year, uh, so I know the track. Uh, usually after Saratoga, um, I go there in September before before Keenan, so I know the track. And um, but it's gonna be definitely interesting to see uh, what what how it's gonna be uh, the intermediate area. Thank you, and uh, best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. The next question comes from Bill Finley of New York Times. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you, Julian. Another follow-up question. Um, back in the day when you were riding uh, in France or growing up in France, uh, how mm-hmm. much did you even know about the Kentucky Derby? And was your dream to win a race like the Arc de Triomphe and, and you didn't even really consider something like the Derby? Uh, well, actually, in France, the first Derby I saw was only in 2002. That's the first one I believe they show on TV. Um, so then after that, I follow it every year. Well, I came in 2003, so I watched it in 2003 and 2003. And then, you know, I was uh, I saw my first derby in 2004. And, um, you know, it, it's good on TV, but that's amazing when you actually there and watch it. So uh, I definitely... Uh, uh, was my dream the first year I was here and uh, and saw that. And, and Julian, why did you come from France to try to ride in the United States? Well, um, my first reason was actually uh, to learn the language and see. I, I did school. I, I finished school before. I, I never rode in France actually. I never rode races. So what I did, I finished school and after school I wanted to see something different and I came here and. I, just loved it, and um, you know my dream was always to be a jockey. So uh, we started my career over here with Patrick Bincon, and uh, since then I never want to go back in France to ride. That's for sure. And when you first came here, just to, as you said to learn the language, did you expect that you would eventually go back to France to be a jockey there? Well, you know, uh, you know, I was obviously younger, and I didn't really know, you know, what to expect at this point. So for me, I was just coming to, for the experience, uh, learn the language, but also learn how to ride uh, race horses. 
And, um, you know, after six months over here, uh, uh, I knew I want to stay here and uh, and try to be a jockey here. Yeah. Very good. Again, thank you, Julian. Thank you. Thank you. There are no further questions at this time. I'll turn the conference back to Mr. Wing. Julian, one more from me before we say goodbye. Uh, mm -hmm. You mentioned the traffic that's always a part of the Kentucky Derby and uh, yes. 20 horses, and you're going to be riding a horse that will be coming from behind. Uh, will you, I don't want you to reveal your strategy, but will you go into the race with a plan, or are such plans usually rendered pointless and you wind up just having to ride the race as it develops? Well, you always try to go with a plan in the race, you know, uh, but to get a plan, you got to see first um, the post position for everybody. But you, you kind of try to get a plan, but usually you really do have to ride your horse as, you know, as it comes, because, you know, you got plan A, but you usually, usually uh, need a plan B and C, usually. <laughs> And, and, and Julian, do you indeed, or any rider for that matter, but you can only speak for yourself, do you come up with like three or four or five plans, or at what point do you say like, all right, this is enough? No, I think I, I think you come up with only um, just one and try to see how the race is gonna go, and uh, and then when you actually leave the gate, you gotta. You guys just make the, your own plane after that. You know, it just can't change any time. Then you're you're relying on your experience at that point. Yes. Well, yeah, definitely. Right. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, it's just I can I can't really explain it. It's just something you gotta do and uh, see see how it goes. Yeah. Well, it 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 makes perfect sense, Julian and. Uh, we thank you so much for coming on the call with us today, and we wish you the best a week from Saturday aboard Union Rags.